for first pass at Galois theory, a good idea is to focus on number fields to develop intuition. In here, we'll also consider finite fields. The differences between characteristic zero and characteristic p are very interesting, and it will require only a little bit more work. Now recall, p is a prime. We'll say a field has characteristic p if, for all x in the field, p times x, that's the same as adding x to itself p times, is always zero. Then, if we consider the subfield generated by one, we get a copy of z mod p in our field. For examples, okay, we have the finite fields f sub q. In this case, q is going to be a power of p. And then we'll have function fields over f sub q. So for instance, we have things like rational functions in the variable x with coefficients in f sub q. So here I have polynomials in f sub q over polynomials over f sub q. For us, our main interest is going to be in finite fields. So let's recall some results from the ring theory course. For our first result, we didn't prove this, but we will eventually. Up to isomorphism, there exists a unique finite field f sub q with q equal to p of the n elements. Now, to narrow the orders of fields down to p to the n, okay, how do we see that? So we have f sub q, inside of f sub q is a z mod p, and if we check the conditions, f sub q is going to be a vector space with coefficients over z mod p. Now, because f sub q is finite, that means it's a finite dimensional vector space, and I can choose a basis, x1 through xn. Now, this means every element in the field can be written uniquely as a linear combination of the x's with coefficients in z mod p. So we have a general element that looks like this. Now, if we start counting elements, okay, we have p choices for c1, p choices for c2, all the way up through p choices for cn, and then we just multiply. And that gives p to the n choices for elements in f sub q. Another theorem that we have, okay, so this one we did prove, consider the group of multiplicative units in f sub q. So this is just f sub cubed, and then we throw away zero. Group of units is going to form a cyclic group under multiplication. Then it'll be isomorphic to the cyclic group z mod p to the n minus one. Recall from last time, if phi is a ring homomorphism carrying a field k to a ring r, then phi is one to one. That means between fields, the only homomorphisms are inclusions. That leads us to questions like, okay, so K and L are fields. When is K a subfield of L? When are K and L isomorphic? And where are the field automorphisms of K? Galois theory promises a connection between one and three. If we focus on F sub Q's, okay, well, when is F sub Q prime a subfield of F sub Q? Using the same argument as before, We'll have f sub q is a vector space over f sub q prime. Okay, we could choose a basis and then count elements. Then we see that q is equal to some power of q prime. Now, q is equal to p of the n, q prime is equal to p to the m, then that'll mean that m has to divide n. That's a necessary condition. We'll see later on that it's also sufficient. Now, Let's look at a concrete example. So I'll take f sub 4 and f sub 8. For f sub 4, okay, our construction was we take z mod 2, I'll join an element alpha. Alpha satisfies a relation alpha squared equals alpha plus 1. Note we can always reduce powers of alpha to get something in the form a plus b alpha. a and b are in z mod 2. So four elements. For f sub 8, Okay, we use z mod 2 adjoining beta, where beta cubed equals beta squared plus 1. Again, we can always reduce powers to get down to a plus b beta plus c beta squared. So here we have eight elements. Now note, if we take the groups of units, for f sub 4, we get three elements. For f sub 8, we get seven elements. So if f sub 4 was a subfield of f sub 8, okay, we would have an inclusion of subgroups at the level of units 
but I don't have that three divide seven. So F sub four can't be a subfield of F sub eight. Now, just to verify, note that four is equal to two squared, eight is two cubed, and I have that two does not divide three. So that verifies this result. Okay, some things to note from this result. Okay, assuming necessary and sufficient condition. First, we could set up a lattice of finite fields for a fixed prime. Okay, note our inclusions are just given by division of the exponents. Okay, so z mod two goes to f4, f8, f32. This first layer is gonna be all two to a prime. Okay, and then note, if we have that exponent as a prime, then there are no proper subfields. Also note, if we have m dividing n, that's gonna imply that p of the m minus one must divide p of the n minus one. So let's check that. If f sub q prime is a subfield, then the group of units is a subgroup of the group of units of f sub q. Lagrange's theorem then implies p of the m minus one divides p of the n minus one. Let's see this directly. For examples, okay, we have p equals two, exponents two and four, we get three divides 15, as expected. If I have p equals three, same exponents, we get eight divides 80. Now, for the general result, first I wanna show that the polynomial x to the n minus one divides x to the n minus one over the integers. To do this, I'll let y be equal to x to the n, because m divides n, we have x to the n is some y to the k, and now I want to show that y to k minus 1 is divisible by y minus 1. For that, we use synthetic division. That gives that this quotient is 1 plus y up through y to k minus 1. We substitute back in x to the m for y, and that gives our polynomial over the integers as promised. So that gives this. We substitute in p for x, and that's our result. Now, moving on to automorphisms, Galois theory promises a connection between automorphisms and intermediate fields by looking at fixed fields. So we want to look for things that are fixed in finite fields. First clue is going to be Fermat's little theorem. So if we have p a prime, then m to the p is congruent to m modulo p. Okay, another way to interpret that, p divides m to the p minus m in the integers. Now, there are two ways we can interpret this for finite fields. Interpretation one, we'll have every element in z mod p is a root of the polynomial f of x equal to x to the p minus x in z mod p adjoin x, okay, polynomials over z mod p. Now, because of that, we get a complete factorization of this polynomial as x times x minus one, all the way up through x minus p minus one. Another interpretation, if I consider the map that just sends elements in Z mod P to their pth power, okay, well, everything is fixed under this map. So this map is just gonna send M to M to the P, and then by Fermat, that's just M. So these M's are all gonna be fixed. Now, we might hope that raising to the pth power gives a field automorphism. In this case, it does. So suppose sigma carries FQ to FQ by raising to the pth power, the ring homomorphism properties are all clear except for the additive property. For this, we invoke the binomial theorem. Now, because p is a prime, p divides the binomial coefficient p choose i, except when i is zero or p. Okay, in that case, coefficient's equal to one. Because we have characteristic p, all the inside terms drop out, and I'm left with alpha to the p plus beta to the p. And that's our homomorphism property. Note, this argument works for general characteristic P. We don't need to be in a finite field. Now, what are fixed fields under sigma? Well, if we're in FQ, okay, we assume sigma of alpha equals alpha. Okay, then we're gonna have alpha to the P equals alpha, or alpha is a root of X to the P minus X. We already know how to factor that, okay? Factors over Z mod P. So that's gonna mean alpha has to be one of zero, one, two, up through p minus one. Has to be in the z mod p inside of f sub q. 
So that means the fixed field is just going to be Z mod P. Now, that doesn't seem very interesting if we're looking for these intermediate fields, okay, these subfields. What we do instead, we're going to consider powers of sigma. So rather than raising to the pth power, we raise to the p to the kth power. Now, if we're in Fq, okay, we know that F sub Q star, the group of units is cyclic, okay, that's going to have p to the n minus 1 elements. So we're going to have every element in F sub Q as a root of x to the Q minus x. And then that means we can factor this polynomial completely over F sub Q. So it's just going to range over all the elements of F sub Q, each being used once. Now, if we were in a general field, I wanted to extract a finite field with Q elements. Okay, well, what I could try to do is apply sigma to the n and see if there's a fixed field that comes out of that. Now, we'll say more about this later on.